I do not recognise the IPCC report, which was published two months ago. I mean, I read that report, not every appendix. It runs to 4,000 pages, but I read through a lot of it. And, you know, you pick up, OK, there is changes to the climate. The temperatures are climbing on average 0.1 Celsius per decade, sea levels rising by three millimetres a year. And that, that causes problems in the longer run. Um, you know, we, we, we don't want to sort of um, pump out carbon dioxide change the, the constitution of the atmosphere. I, I get that completely. But the, the idea that we're, we're in some kind of existentialist threat, that we're going to sort of be reduced to um, a wasteland within a few years as a result of climate, man-made climate change, is just completely ridiculous. And it is in no way is it borne out by the um, the, the science that's been done. I mean, for example, you know, we get it every time we've got any kind of adverse weather, we're told it's climate change. And every time there's a storm, we're going to have more storms in future. You never guess that actually the IPCC report says, finds evidence that the de decreasing um, trend in storms, severe storms at our latitude, um, the wet, climate's getting a little bit wetter, but to the tune of a few percent that doesn't mm. you know turn us from a normal climate into one of biblical deluge i mean we, we have extreme weather because we've always had extreme weather but what, what's happening is we're getting to the level of mass hysteria now and i think the reason for it is because we've got this sort of completely asymmetric um uh, approach to what what's allowed to be said now i mean well, yes the because BBC. well i was going to i was going to say actually and i'll i'll just read out a little bit of what you've said about the bbc because i thought it was fascinating anyone even slightly skeptical of sl climate change claims seems now to be effectively banned from the bbc but you say there's no restriction on people who exaggerate like Zoe Cohen of Insulate Britain, who gave a long interview on the Today programme claiming that climate change will lead to the loss of all of that we cherish, our society, our way of life and law and order. And as you point out, where's the evidence to that? And she wasn't even challenged. She wasn't, and she added that it was going to cost billions of people's lives. And you think, hang on, you know, why is nobody asking? Why not say, what is your methodology? What is your... Uh... Uh, assumptions behind that modelling. Where does it come from, this idea that billions of people are going to be killed by climate change? Of course, there is no science behind it. It's just a product of activism. But it's, you know, that sort of tolerated on um, outlets like the BBC, where's the, the smallest sort of, um, uh, you know, scepticism about anything to do with climate change is effectively banned. And I remember last time I was on the BBC talking about um, climate change. Oh, we're not allowed to have deniers on anymore and so on. You know, you're just about the most sort of extreme we're allowed. And I'm not, and now they won't even have me on. So, um, but on the same time, you know, you've got these complete um, hysterical people, really. And it's absolutely no wonder that um, children are being traumatized. Well, of course. By it. And, and there are very rational political debates, Ross, which we're going to have to have over the next 20, 30 years. And the BBC are going to have to accept we're going to have to have, for example, about the pace of getting to net zero, about exactly what we're all going to have to do to our homes, about whether we're going to accept that we're not able to travel in the same way. And if anyone taking a counterposition to the eco mob is accused of being a climate change sceptic, then we're not going to be having the right sort of democratic discussions.